So Jesus wants us to hang out with him. He wants us to become like him. You want to become like him? You're going to have to spend time with Jesus. Does that make sense? This, this is why I'm constantly talking to you about a quiet time. Get into, your, get into your Bible, pray to God, study the Bible, meditate, pray. All of that is so important because the more time you spend with God, the more you're going to be like him. And I want you to know that doesn't have to be like hours a day. Somebody asked me the other day, how, many, how, how much time do you spend in the Word? I, I spend almost all day in the Word. Almost the entire day is in the Word. Prayer, meditation, Word of God. You don't have to do that. Listen, if you just spend 10 or 15 minutes a day with God, that's going to be beneficial. That's going to help you become more and more like Jesus Christ. You can do that in the morning. You can do that in the afternoon. You can do that at night. As long as it's in a place where you can be quiet with God, let God speak to you through the word of God, through the truth that's in the Bible, and you speak to God, you're able to do that in prayer without having all this disruption and all these distractions around you. That means turn off the television set, get away from the kids if you have to, get in a place where it's quiet. Why? Because it's there that you're going to be able to spend time focusing on Jesus. That's what it says here in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Let's read it together. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from start to finish. So the way you become more like Jesus Christ is by focusing on him, spending time with him. Now that means you can't be divided in your focus. That means you can't focus on the world and focus on Jesus at the same time. Have you ever tried to listen to two things at the same time? Think about two things at the same time? Have you ever tried to walk in two different directions at the same time? You know, it's impossible. Have you ever tried to focus your mind on two things at the same time? You can't do it. You're going to focus on one or the other, but you can't do both. And to show you how this works, I need a volunteer to help me. So anybody, anybody who wants to come up and help me out, come on up. Somebody. All right, Scott, so you were pushed right into it, weren't you? Yeah, I can tell that. All right, get out of hand. So I've got a glass, and I'm going to pour, just pour some water in it. And I want you to see how that when you're focused on one thing, you accomplish something. Simple, simple thing. So I want you to go ahead and take the glass, take a sip from the straw. It's good water. Tastes good? Yeah, okay. Wet? Okay, so you were able to sip the water out. All right, now I've got another straw, and I'm going to give you two straws now. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to put the straw inside. I'm going to put the straw on the outside. And I want you to now try to sip water. All right? There you go. Sip water through both. It ain't happening. <laughs> so you're coming up dry, right? Okay, so you want to try it one more time? See if you can get it? Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. Thank you, Scott. Give him a hand. See? When you're trying to focus on the world and you're trying to focus on Jesus, it's just like trying to drink from this glass out of two straws. One's on the inside, one on the outside. You're going to come up dry. You're not going to be able to accomplish anything. You're not going to become like Jesus Christ because you've got to stay focused on Jesus in order to become like Jesus. Does that make sense? You can't focus on the world and expect to become like Jesus. That's how simple it is. You've got to stay focused on him. Then you'll start to become more like him. Now, a great example of someone who really spent a lot of time with God in the Bible is Moses. He spent a tremendous amount of time with God up close and personal. Remember when he went up on Mount Sinai? Remember when God gave him the Ten Commandments? The Bible says that he spent so much time on Mount Sinai with God 
that when he came down off the mountain, he actually glowed. His face glowed. Imagine me turning off the lights and my face glowing. Would that scare you? It scared everybody else too. It scared the Israelites as well. So guess what? Moses had to put a veil over his face and he had to go around with his veil over his face so people were freaked out by this glowing face that he had. And the reason why he had that glowing face was because he was up close and personal with God Almighty. He was right there with them, not just for a minute, not just for an hour, but probably for months and months on end, learning about God, learning who he is. And when he came down off that mountain, his face was glowing. You could tell he was different. You could tell he was with God. 2 Corinthians in chapter 3, verse 18, Paul says this about us. All of us have had that veil removed so that we can be mirrors that brightly reflect the glory of the Lord. And as the Spirit of the Lord works within us, we become what? More and more like him and reflect his glory. I want you to circle this phrase more and more and circle that word reflect. The more time you spend with God, the more time you focus on Jesus, the more time you get into God's word, the more time you pray, the more time you meditate, the more time you worship God the more you're going to become like Jesus and reflect the qualities of God in your life. That's what we learned from Moses. Now that doesn't happen overnight. In fact, this verse shows us that it happens progressively. He says more and more. That means it's going to be a process. And this is what you need to know, that if you want to become like Jesus, it's going to be a process that happens in your life over a lifetime. And that's important to know. Why? Because these days, everybody's in a rush. Southern California, we're, we're best at this. Everybody's in a hurry. Everybody wants instant results. That's why we all have microwaves. That's why we're impatiently standing in front of the microwave for the next 30 seconds to go by and we're saying, how come you aren't cooked yet? You know, we're just impatient. And we're in a hurry. And we want it now, instantaneously. Here's the thing. We have instant coffee. It's terrible, but it, it, is, it, it exists. We've got instant potatoes. It's terrible, but they exist, right? Here's what I want you to understand. There is no such thing as instant maturity. I can show you how to become the man or woman that God wants you to become. I can show you. I can teach you. I can share with you what the Bible says, how to become more like Jesus. But here's the thing I can't do. I cannot tell you how to do it quickly because you can't. It's not gonna happen that way. 